The Chelsea Hotel in New York City is more than just a building. It's a living piece of history, a place where creativity and tragedy have intertwined for over a century. Constructed in 1884, the Chelsea was originally intended as a cooperative apartment for artists. Its ornate Gothic architecture and bohemian atmosphere quickly attracted a variety of tenants, painters, writers, musicians, and actors, all drawn to the hotel's promise of cheap rent and an environment steeped in artistic inspiration. But the Chelsea Hotel is also notorious for the darker stories that unfolded within its walls. From the tragic deaths of famous residents to the whispered tales of hauntings, the Chelsea has a legacy that is as much about the spirits that may still linger there as it is about the creativity that once thrived. Today, as the building undergoes renovations, its legend is a place where the line between the living and the dead blurs remains as strong as ever. The Chelsea Hotel's dark history is marked by a series of tragic deaths and infamous incidents that have added to its mystique. One of the most notorious cases is the death of Nancy Spungen, the girlfriend of Sex Pistols bassist Sid Vicious. In 1978, Nancy was found stabbed to death in room 100 of the hotel, a crime that shocked the punk rock world. Sid Vicious was arrested for her murder, though he died of a drug overdose before the case could be brought to trial. This tragic event cast a long shadow over the hotel, cementing its reputation as a place of doom for some of its residents. But Nancy Spungen's death is just one chapter in the Chelsea's grim history. The poet Dylan Thomas spent his last days at the hotel, drinking himself into a fatal coma. His words, I have had 18 straight whiskeys, I think that's the record, are often quoted as he fell seriously ill and died shortly after being admitted to the hospital. Other deaths, less famous but equally tragic, have occurred within the hotel's rooms, contributing to its eerie reputation. The hotel's walls seem to hold on to the memories of these lost souls, with many guests and residents claiming to have experienced strange phenomena, such as unexplained cold spots, disembodied voices, and fleeting glimpses of ghostly figures. The Chelsea Hotel's macabre history is steeped in legends of hauntings and paranormal activity, stories passed down by generations of residents and guests. These tales are not just idle gossip, but a persistent and unsettling part of the Chelsea experience, with many claiming that the spirits of those who met tragic ends within its walls still linger, refusing to move on. One of the most frequently reported apparitions is that of Dylan Thomas. Visitors and staff alike have claimed to see a figure matching his description wandering the halls, particularly near the room where he spent his final days. Some describe hearing the faint sound of typing on an old typewriter, only to find the room empty. Others have heard the poet's deep Welsh accented voice reciting lines of poetry in the dead of night. These encounters are often accompanied by a sudden drop in temperature, as if the very air grows cold in his presence. The ghost of Nancy Spungen is another specter said to haunt the Chelsea Hotel. Room 100, where she met her violent end, is considered one of the most haunted locations in the building. Guests who have stayed in the room report hearing the sounds of a woman crying, sometimes soft and sorrowful, other times anguished and loud enough to wake them from sleep. There are also reports of unexplained cold drafts, doors slamming shut on their own, and objects moving or being knocked over with no apparent cause. Some say that Nancy's spirit is trapped in a loop, endlessly reliving the last moments of her life, her cries echoing through the walls as a reminder of her untimely death. Beyond these two well-known figures, there are countless other stories of spectral encounters at the Chelsea, some involve the spirits of lesser-known artists and musicians who lived and died there. Their presence felt in the very spaces where they created their work. A number of residents have spoken of hearing ghostly music, as if a band is rehearsing in one of the rooms, only for the sound to abruptly stop when investigated. Others have seen shadowy figures in the corners of their vision, 
figures that disappear the moment they turn to face them. There are also reports of more aggressive hauntings, where the spirits seem less like tragic remnants of the past and more like malevolent forces. Guests have woken up to the sensation of being watched, or worse, the feeling of hands pressing down on their chest, as if an invisible presence is trying to suffocate them. Some have reported seeing ghostly faces in mirrors or windows, faces that aren't their own and vanish when they look again. These experiences leave many with a deep sense of unease, as if the hotel itself is alive, feeding off the energies of its residents and visitors. The haunting of the Chelsea Hotel is not confined to individual rooms, but permeates the entire building. The creaking of old floors, the flickering of lights, and the strange, oppressive atmosphere all contribute to the sense that the hotel is a place where the past and present collide, where the dead are never truly gone. It's a place where time seems to stand still, and those who enter are often left with the feeling that they have stepped into another world. A world where the boundaries between the living and the dead are blurred, and where the echoes of history are as real and tangible as the walls that contain them. While the ghostly figures of Dylan Thomas and Nancy Spungen are among the most famous spirits said to haunt the Chelsea Hotel, the building's dark legends and hidden secrets go far beyond these well-known tragedies. The hotel's reputation as a magnet for the strange and unexplained has only grown over the years, fueled by countless lesser-known stories of eerie encounters and inexplicable phenomena. One such tale involves the mysterious disappearance of a resident in the 1950s, a reclusive artist known only by the name of Victor. Victor was an enigmatic figure, keeping mostly to himself, rarely seen by other residents. He was known for working late into the night, often leaving his room only to gather materials for his art. One day, Victor vanished without a trace. His room was found undisturbed, his half-finished canvases still on their easels, brushes dipped in dried paint, as if he had simply stepped out for a moment. Despite a thorough search of the hotel and the surrounding area, no sign of Victor was ever found. Some believe that Victor became so consumed by his work that he lost touch with reality, crossing over into another realm, one that perhaps still exists within the Chelsea's walls. This story is often linked to a curious phenomenon reported by some guests, a sense of being watched by unseen eyes. Those who stay in the vicinity of Victor's former room have described feeling an intense, almost oppressive presence, as though someone or something is lurking just out of sight. Some have even claimed to see flashes of light or shadowy figures moving just beyond the range of their vision, always vanishing when approached. There is a persistent rumor that Victor's spirit, or whatever became of him, remains trapped within the hotel, his restless energy contributing to the building's eerie atmosphere. Another unsettling legend is that of the Red Room, a supposed hidden chamber within the Chelsea Hotel that is said to be the epicenter of its paranormal activity. According to the legend, the Red Room was once used for dark rituals or secretive meetings by a shadowy group whose identity remains unknown. Some say that these rituals involved summoning spirits or opening doorways to other dimensions, and that the room itself became a portal through which malevolent entities could enter our world. While the existence of the Red Room has never been proven, many residents and guests claim to have felt its influence, reporting strange noises, inexplicable cold spots, and feelings of dread whenever they pass certain areas of the hotel. Some have even described the sensation of being drawn towards a specific spot, as if compelled by an unseen force. The Chelsea's elevators are another source of unnerving stories. Unlike other parts of the hotel, which have been updated and renovated over the years, the elevators retain much of their original machinery, adding to their creaky, antiquated charm. But this charm is accompanied by tales of unexplained occurrences. Some guests have reported entering the elevator, only for it to stop between floors, its doors opening to reveal a dark, empty shaft instead of a hallway. 
Others have spoken of the elevator, taking them to floors that don't exist. Doors opening to reveal rooms that are not part of the official hotel layout. Dimly lit and filled with strange, old-fashioned furniture. These floors often disappear as quickly as they appear, leading many to believe that the Chelsea's elevators sometimes cross into another dimension, or that they are somehow connected to the building's ghostly past. In addition to these supernatural tales, the Chelsea Hotel is also surrounded by rumors of hidden passageways and secret rooms, remnants of its long and storied history. Some speculate that these hidden spaces were used during Prohibition for clandestine gatherings or as hideaways for those seeking refuge. Others believe that they were constructed by the hotel's original architect as part of a grand but never fully realized vision for the building. These secret areas, if they exist, have become the stuff of legend, with many claiming that they house not just memories, but the spirits of those who once occupied them. These legends, while perhaps exaggerated over time, contribute to the Chelsea Hotel's mystique. They are part of the fabric of the building, woven into its walls and corridors, creating a place where reality and myth are difficult to separate. For many, the Chelsea is more than just a hotel. It is a living entity, shaped by the countless lives and deaths that have occurred within its walls, and by the secrets that may never be fully uncovered. The Chelsea Hotel, now partially renovated and under new management, continues to captivate those who pass through its doors. Though the building has undergone significant changes in recent years, with modern amenities and updated interiors, its essence remains unchanged. The ghosts of the past, both literal and metaphorical, linger in the air, reminding visitors of the hotel's storied history. The hotel's iconic facade still looms over 23rd Street, its iron balconies draped in vines, and its brick walls holding the secrets of generations. It's as if the Chelsea itself resists any attempt to fully modernize, clinging to its identity as a place where the boundaries between the real and the supernatural blur. Despite the renovations, many of the hotel's long-term residents, those who have lived there for decades, have remained, their presence adding to the building's unique character. These individuals are not just tenants, they are part of the Chelsea's living history, witnesses to the countless stories that have played out within its walls. They speak of the hotel with a mix of affection and respect, acknowledging its quirks and its occasional unsettling moments as part of its charm. For these residents, the Chelsea is more than just a place to live. It is a community, a sanctuary for those who have always felt like outsiders. The hotel's reputation as a hotspot for paranormal activity also endures. Ghost hunters, paranormal investigators, and curious tourists continue to flock to the Chelsea, hoping to catch a glimpse of the unexplained. Some come armed with cameras and recording equipment, ready to document any signs of ghostly presence. Others simply walk the halls, soaking in the atmosphere and the sense of history that permeates the building. For many, the appeal of the Chelsea lies in the possibility that they might encounter something beyond the ordinary, a brush with the unknown that leaves them questioning what is real and what is imagined. The hotel's place in pop culture remains strong as well. It continues to be referenced in films, music, and literature, often portrayed as a symbol of artistic freedom, bohemian lifestyle, and haunted glamour. The stories of those who lived and died at the Chelsea have become part of its mythology, their lives intertwined with the hotel's legacy, even as the world around it changes. The Chelsea stands as a testament to a bygone era, a place where art and life, love and tragedy, the mundane and the supernatural all coexisted in a delicate balance. As the Chelsea Hotel moves forward into the future, its legacy is secure. It remains a landmark, not just of New York City, but of a certain kind of creative spirit. A spirit that embraces the unknown, that finds beauty in the unconventional, and that understands the power of stories, both seen and unseen. 
The hotel's walls may have been refreshed, its rooms updated, but the soul of the Chelsea is timeless. It is a place where the past is never truly gone, where the echoes of history continue to resonate, and where the line between the living and the dead is just a little bit thinner than elsewhere. In the end, the Chelsea Hotel is more than just a building. It is an experience, a legend, story still being written by everyone who enters. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, there is no denying that the Chelsea has a presence, a feeling that is impossible to ignore. It is a place where time seems to stand still, where the past lingers in every corner, and where the spirits of those who came before still walk the halls, their stories forever a part of the Chelsea's enduring legacy. Stull Cemetery, located in the small town of Stull, Kansas, is known as one of the most haunted cemeteries in America. This graveyard, along with its adjacent abandoned church, has gained a terrifying reputation over the years. The stories about Stull Cemetery go beyond typical ghost tales, reaching into the realm of the diabolical. Some legends claim it is one of the gateways to hell, and a place where the devil himself holds court. The history of Stoll Cemetery and its haunting dates back over a century. The town of Stoll, originally known as Deer Creek, was settled by German immigrants in the mid-1800s. The settlers built a church on a hill overlooking the cemetery, which became the focal point of many eerie legends. Over time, stories of witchcraft, ghost sightings, and supernatural occurrences began to surround the cemetery and its old church. One of the earliest documented tales came from a 1974 article in the University of Kansas student newspaper. This article describes strange and diabolical happenings in the cemetery, including the claim that the devil appears there twice a year, on the spring equinox and on Halloween. The cemetery was said to be the site of numerous supernatural events, including ghostly apparitions, unexplained winds, and eerie sounds. The reputation of Stull Cemetery continued to grow, fueled by stories of devil worship, witchcraft, and mysterious occurrences. Despite the local residents' attempts to dismiss these tales as fabrications, the legends persisted. Over the years, the cemetery has attracted curious visitors, paranormal investigators, and thrill-seekers, all hoping to catch a glimpse of the supernatural. In this haunted history, the cemetery and its surroundings have become a symbol of fear and intrigue. The old, crumbling church, now a ruin, adds to the eerie atmosphere. Many believe that the stories of Stull Cemetery hold a grain of truth, rooted in some long-forgotten supernatural event that has since been embellished over time. As we delve deeper into the haunted history of Stull Cemetery, we will explore the legends, the ghosts, and the chilling encounters that have made this place one of the most infamous haunted locations in America. Stull Cemetery's eerie reputation dates back to the early 20th century. Locals began whispering about strange occurrences and ghostly apparitions seen among the tombstones. One of the earliest and most chilling stories involves the old church that once stood in the cemetery. Built in the 1860s, the church was a modest stone structure that served the small community for decades. However, as time went on, it fell into disrepair and eventually became abandoned. In the 1920s, rumors began to circulate about the church being a site of occult rituals. People claimed to have seen hooded figures gathering there at night, chanting incantations and performing dark ceremonies. The church, they said, was a gateway to the underworld, a place where the veil between the living and the dead was perilously thin. Some even believed that the devil himself appeared there twice a year, on Halloween and the spring equinox, to convene with his followers. These tales were fueled by unexplained events that seemed to plague the area. Witnesses reported seeing ghostly lights flickering in the church's windows long after it had been abandoned. The sound of disembodied voices and eerie laughter would echo through the night sending chills down the spines of those brave enough to venture near. Livestock and nearby farms were found dead under mysterious circumstances, and residents spoke of an oppressive, 
malevolent presence that seemed to hover over the cemetery. The legend of Stoll Cemetery took on a life of its own, growing more elaborate and terrifying with each retelling. One of the most persistent stories is that of a hidden staircase beneath the church. According to local lore, the staircase descends directly to the underworld. Those who dared to enter and find the staircase would never return, their souls forever trapped in the infernal depths. Despite numerous attempts to debunk these myths, the stories persisted. The church eventually collapsed, but its foundation remained, a grim reminder of the dark legends that surrounded it. To this day, many believe that the ruins are a focal point of paranormal activity, a place where the spirits of the damned wander freely. As the years passed, Stull Cemetery's reputation only grew. It became a magnet for thrill-seekers, ghost hunters, and paranormal investigators. Each visit seemed to uncover new, unsettling phenomena, footsteps echoing in the silence, sudden drops in temperature, and shadowy figures darting between the tombstones. The cemetery's dark history and spine-chilling legends have made it one of the most infamous haunted locations in the United States. Those who have dared to explore its grounds often leave with more questions than answers, haunted by the feeling that they have glimpsed into a world beyond our own where the dead do not rest easy. Stull Cemetery is known for its unsettling atmosphere and numerous ghostly encounters. Among the spirits that are said to haunt this eerie graveyard, there are a few that stand out, each with their own chilling story. One of the most infamous ghosts of Stull Cemetery is that of the old groundskeeper. It is said that the man who worked there many years ago mysteriously disappeared one night, never to be seen again. Visitors have reported seeing a shadowy figure resembling an old man with a lantern wandering among the tombstones. Some say they've heard the sounds of digging late at night, as if the ghostly groundskeeper is still tending to the graves. Another well-known spirit is that of a young woman who was tragically killed in a car accident near the cemetery. According to local legend, she was on her way to visit a loved one's grave when her car veered off the road. Her ghost is often seen near the entrance of the cemetery, appearing as a pale figure dressed in white. Many who have seen her claim she seems to be searching for something or someone, adding to the sorrowful aura of the place. The ghost of a small child is also said to haunt Stull Cemetery. The spirit is often seen near a particular tree within the graveyard, where the child was reportedly buried many years ago. People have heard the faint sound of a child's laughter or crying when they pass by this tree. Some have even reported seeing the ghostly figure of a little boy, seemingly lost and alone, adding a heartbreaking layer to the cemetery's ghostly lore. Perhaps the most terrifying of all is the ghost of a man who is believed to have been a victim of a violent crime in the area. His spirit is said to appear on certain nights, covered in blood and with a look of anguish on his face. Witnesses have described feeling an intense sense of dread and fear when encountering this apparition, as if the pain and horror of his final moments are still very much present. These ghostly figures are not the only paranormal activity reported at Stull Cemetery. Visitors often speak of sudden drops in temperature, unexplained noises, and the feeling of being watched. Some have captured strange mists or orbs in their photographs, while others have experienced their electronic devices malfunctioning inexplicably. The combination of these sightings and experiences has solidified Stull Cemetery's reputation as one of the most haunted places in America. For those brave enough to venture there, the possibility of encountering one of these restless spirits adds to the allure and the terror of this legendary graveyard. Stull Cemetery's reputation as one of the most haunted places in America is bolstered by numerous reports of ghostly sightings and eerie occurrences. Among the many legends surrounding this eerie graveyard, a few stand out as particularly chilling and have been passed down through generations. One of the most infamous stories associated with Stull Cemetery is that of the burning tree. According to legend, a large tree once stood in the cemetery and it was believed to be the site where witches were hanged in the past. One night, locals claimed to have seen the tree spontaneously burst into flames burning with an unearthly glow. 
Strangely, no charred remains or evidence of a fire were ever found. The tree eventually fell, but its legend lives on, with many visitors reporting an uneasy feeling when they approach its former location. Another tale tells of a hidden staircase that appears only on certain nights. This staircase, said to be located near a particular grave, is believed to be a portal to the underworld. Those who dare to descend the steps are said to vanish without a trace, their souls trapped forever in the dark depths below. While no physical evidence of the staircase exists, many claim to have heard whispers and seen shadows moving near the supposed site, lending credence to the chilling tale. Numerous sightings of a spectral figure known as the Lady in White have been reported over the years. This ghostly apparition is believed to be the spirit of a woman who died under tragic circumstances, possibly related to one of the many dark rituals said to have taken place in the cemetery. Witnesses describe her as a pale, ethereal figure dressed in a flowing white gown who glides silently among the tombstones. Some claim that making eye contact with her brings a feeling of overwhelming sadness and despair, as if experiencing the pain she endured in life. In addition to the stories of witches being hanged, there are also tales of a witch buried within the cemetery grounds. This grave is said to be marked by a distinctive headstone, which many believe is cursed. Those who dare to touch the headstone are rumored to suffer from bad luck, illness, or even death. While the exact location of the witch's grave is unknown, visitors often speak of feeling an intense, unexplainable fear when wandering through certain areas of the cemetery as if they're being watched by unseen eyes. Visitors to Stuhl Cemetery frequently report hearing strange noises and disembodied voices. Some hear whispers and cries that seem to come from nowhere, while others describe hearing faint, mournful singing echoing through the night. These auditory experiences are often accompanied by sightings of ghostly apparitions, flickering lights, and shadowy figures that dart among the tombstones. Paranormal investigators who have explored the cemetery often record unexplained electromagnetic activity and temperature fluctuations, further fueling the belief that Stull Cemetery is a hotspot for supernatural phenomena. These haunting stories contribute to Stull Cemetery's fearsome reputation, making it a magnet for thrill-seekers, paranormal enthusiasts, and those simply looking to experience a brush with the unknown. Despite the eerie tales, the cemetery remains a place of mystery and intrigue, where the line between the living and the dead seems to blur. Stoll Cemetery, with its rich tapestry of eerie legends and ghostly encounters, stands as a testament to the enduring power of folklore and human imagination. The tales of witches, hidden staircases, spectral figures, and unexplained phenomena have turned this small Kansas cemetery into a symbol of the supernatural. While many of the stories surrounding the Stull Cemetery may be steeped in myth, they highlight a deeper fascination with the unknown and the desire to connect with something beyond the ordinary. Whether it's the ghost of the old groundskeeper, the lady in white, or the mysterious staircase to the underworld, each legend adds to the cemetery's mystique and draws people from far and wide. Despite the fear and intrigue that these stories evoke, it's important to approach them with a sense of curiosity and respect. The legends of Stull Cemetery serve as a reminder of the power of storytelling and the ways in which history, culture, and imagination intertwine to create places of mystery and wonder. In the end, Stull Cemetery remains a place where the past and the present meet, where the boundaries between the natural and the supernatural blur. It is a place that invites us to ponder the mysteries of life and death, and to explore the stories that have shaped our understanding of the world. As we leave Stull Cemetery behind, the legends and ghosts will continue to linger in our minds, a testament to the enduring allure of the unknown. Route 666, now known as US Route 491, 
stretches through the desolate landscapes of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. This highway, often referred to as the Devil's Highway, has a reputation steeped in mystery and fear. The road's original name, Route 666, drew associations with the Devil due to the number's ominous connotations. This stretch of highway has been the source of countless tales of haunted happenings and eerie experiences. For decades, drivers and locals alike have shared stories of ghostly apparitions, unexplained phenomena, and strange encounters that make this highway one of the most haunted places in America. The history of Route 666 is marked by numerous fatal accidents and bizarre incidents that have fueled its haunted reputation. From the hounds of hell that supposedly shred the tires of moving vehicles to the haunted red semi-truck driven by an evil spirit. The legends surrounding this highway are as diverse as they are terrifying. Motorists have reported encounters with a mysterious girl in a white dress who vanishes when approached as well as sightings of skinwalkers appearing as animals to cause accidents. These tales, coupled with the high number of fatalities on the road, have led many to believe that the highway is cursed. Route 666's haunted reputation is well known among those who live near and travel on this desolate stretch of road. Dubbed the Devil's Highway, the name alone conjures images of evil and fear. The high number of accidents and fatalities on the highway has only served to reinforce its sinister reputation. Many locals believe that the highway's number, 666, invites a dark presence, leading to an increase in eerie encounters and unexplained phenomena. Stories of paranormal activity and ghost sightings have become almost routine for those familiar with the road. Legends and myths about Route 666 have persisted for years, further cementing its place as a haunted location. Drivers have shared countless accounts of seeing ghostly apparitions, like the girl in the white dress who vanishes when approached. Others have reported encounters with skinwalkers, who appear as animals on the road, causing drivers to swerve and crash. The haunted red semi-truck, driven by an evil spirit, is said to appear out of nowhere, aiming to force vehicles off the road. These stories have made Route 666 infamous, a place where the line between reality and the supernatural blurs, leaving travelers wary and filled with dread. Route 666, now known as Route 491, has no shortage of chilling tales and ghostly encounters. As one travels this desolate highway, they pass through numerous haunted spots, each with its own sinister story. One of the most frequently mentioned apparitions is the mysterious girl in a white dress. Many drivers have reported seeing her walking alone on the side of the road, only to have her disappear when they offer assistance. This ghostly figure, with her sad, unnerving expression, leaves an indelible mark on those who see her, a reminder of the sorrow and tragedy that seem to haunt the highway. Another well-known entity on Route 666 is the Phantom Semi-Truck. Described as a massive red truck with an evil presence, it appears out of nowhere, speeding down the highway with reckless abandon. Drivers have recounted how the truck seems to aim directly at them, forcing them to swerve off the road to avoid a collision. Those who manage to avoid it often find no trace of the truck afterward, leaving them to wonder if it was a hallucination or a true paranormal encounter. This haunted truck is said to be driven by an evil spirit, bent on causing harm to anyone traveling the highway at night. The tales of the hounds of hell are equally terrifying. These supernatural beasts are described as large, menacing dogs with glowing yellow eyes and razor-sharp teeth. Witnesses claim that these hounds can keep pace with speeding vehicles, no matter how fast they go. There have been numerous accounts of these dogs attacking cars, shredding tires, and even jumping into open windows to maul the occupants. These encounters often result in accidents, adding to the highway's reputation as a dangerous and cursed place. Skinwalkers, a staple of local Native American lore, are another unsettling presence on Route 666. 
these shape-shifting beings are said to take the form of animals, appearing suddenly on the road to cause accidents. Drivers have reported swerving to avoid what they believed was an animal, only to see a human figure in their rearview mirror. In some cases, the skinwalkers are said to appear inside the vehicle itself, creating a sense of sheer terror and helplessness. These encounters often leave drivers with a deep sense of unease, convinced they have experienced something truly otherworldly. In addition to these well-known entities, there are countless reports of strange lights and unexplained phenomena along Route 666. UFO sightings are not uncommon, with many drivers recounting how they saw mysterious lights in the sky that moved in ways no known aircraft could. These lights often hover over the highway before disappearing suddenly, leaving witnesses bewildered and frightened. The loss of time is another frequent occurrence, with drivers claiming to lose hours of their journey with no memory of what happened during that period. The haunted history of Route 666 is filled with such chilling stories, each adding to the highway's dark allure. The combination of ghostly apparitions, demonic entities, and unexplained phenomena makes it one of the most haunted highways in the United States. For those brave enough to travel its lonely stretches, the journey is often one of fear and uncertainty, never knowing what might appear out of the darkness. Continuing along Route 666, the eerie tales only grow in number and intensity. Among the most spine-chilling is the legend of the Pale Spirit. This apparition is believed to be the ghost of a young girl who stands by the roadside, often in the middle of nowhere. Dressed in a flowing white gown, she appears fragile and lost, eliciting a mix of sympathy and fear from those who encounter her. Drivers who stop to offer help often find that she vanishes as soon as they approach, leaving behind an eerie silence. Some claim to have seen her weeping, while others report a cold, unnatural stillness that chills them to the bone. Then there are the ghostly hitchhikers. Many travelers have picked up what they believe to be a stranded motorist, only for their passenger to disappear without a trace. These hitchhikers often share chilling stories or ask cryptic questions adding to the unsettling nature of the encounter. Some vanish from the moving vehicle, while others simply seem to fade away when the driver stops to let them out. These encounters often leave the driver with a deep sense of dread, convinced they have been in the presence of something not of this world. The legend of Satan's sedan is another tale that adds to the haunted reputation of Route 666. Witnesses describe an ominous black car that appears out of nowhere, often speeding towards them with no regard for safety. This vehicle is said to exude a malevolent presence, and many believe it is driven by a demonic entity. Those who have encountered Satan's sedan report feeling an overwhelming sense of fear and an urge to flee. The car is often seen only at night, its headlights piercing the darkness before disappearing as suddenly as it appeared. Some speculate that it is a manifestation of the highway's cursed past, a reminder of the countless lives lost on its treacherous stretches. Route 666 is also home to numerous reports of UFO sightings. Drivers have recounted seeing strange lights in the sky, moving in ways that defy explanation. These lights often follow vehicles, hovering above the road before darting away at incredible speeds. Some witnesses claim to have seen entire spacecraft, with vivid descriptions of their otherworldly designs. These encounters often leave drivers disoriented and frightened, unsure of what they have just experienced. The combination of these sightings with the already eerie reputation of the highway only adds to the sense of dread that surrounds it. Disappearances and time loss are another common theme along Route 600 66. Many travelers have set out on the highway only to vanish without a trace. In some cases, their vehicles are found abandoned with no sign of the driver. Others reappear hours or even days later with no memory of where they have been or what has happened to them. These incidents often leave families and friends in a state of anguish. 
with no explanation for their loved one's sudden disappearance. Those who do return often speak of strange dreams or feelings of being watched, adding to the mystery and fear surrounding the highway. The phenomenon of time loss is particularly unsettling. Drivers have reported traveling what should have been a short distance, only to find that hours have passed without their knowledge. This lost time is often accompanied by feelings of confusion and disorientation, as if they have been in a trance. Some speculate that this could be the result of alien abductions or other supernatural forces at work. Whatever the cause, these incidents contribute to the haunted lore of Route 666, making it a place where time itself seems to bend and warp. In addition to these supernatural occurrences, Route 666 is also known for its treacherous conditions. The long rural stretches with few turns, combined with frequent animal crossings and drunk driving, create a dangerous environment. Many accidents have occurred on this highway, adding to its reputation as a cursed and haunted road. The high fatality rate, particularly in the New Mexico portion, has led to numerous ghostly sightings and spooky activity. These accidents often leave behind restless spirits, adding to the already heavy sense of unease that hangs over the highway. As one travels Route 666, the sense of foreboding and fear grows stronger. The combination of ghostly apparitions, demonic entities, UFO sightings, and unexplained disappearances creates a highway that is truly one of the most haunted in America. Each mile traveled brings new stories and encounters, making it a journey into the heart of darkness itself. For those who dare to travel, Route 666. The experience is one of terror and mystery, never knowing what might be lurking just around the next bend. As we reach the end of our journey down Route 666, now known as Route 491, it is clear that this highway's haunted reputation is deeply ingrained in the landscape and its history. From the tales of hellhounds and Satan's sedan to the ghostly hitchhikers and mysterious disappearances, every mile of this road is steeped in eerie encounters and unexplained phenomena. The highway's legacy as the Devil's Highway continues to captivate and terrify those who travel its lonely, desolate stretches. The renaming of Route 666 to Route 400 and 91 was an attempt to shed the negative connotations associated with its former number. While the new designation may have reduced the psychological fear for some, the legends and ghost stories have not faded. The spectral girl in the white dress, the menacing semi-truck, and the ominous black sedan still haunt the memories of those who have encountered them. Despite the change in numbers, the essence of the highway remains the same. Shrouded in mystery and fear, the high fatality rate and frequent accidents have undoubtedly contributed to the ghostly tales. The dangerous driving conditions, combined with the isolation of the desert, create a perfect backdrop for supernatural stories. Many believe that the restless spirits of those who lost their lives on this highway continue to roam, unable to find peace. These spirits, combined with the dark legends and sightings of UFOs, make Route 666 a hotspot for paranormal activity. Route 666 is not just a road, it is a symbol of the unknown and the unexplainable. It serves as a reminder of the thin veil between our world and the supernatural. Whether you are a skeptic or a believer, the stories surrounding this highway are enough to give anyone pause. The combination of historical tragedies, cultural legends, and first-hand accounts of eerie encounters makes it one of the most intriguing and feared highways in America. For those who seek adventure and are brave enough to travel this haunted road, Route 666 offers a unique experience. It is a journey through a landscape where reality and legend blur, where every shadow and distant light might be something more than it seems. As we conclude our exploration of this haunted highway, we are left with a sense of awe and respect for the stories that have emerged from its dark past. In the end, 
Route 666 remains a powerful testament to the enduring nature of folklore and the human fascination with the supernatural. Its haunted history continues to draw curious travelers, ghost hunters, and thrill seekers. Whether driven by a desire to uncover the truth or simply to experience the eerie atmosphere, those who venture onto Route 666 do so with the understanding that they are stepping into a place where the ordinary rules of the world do not always apply. So as you consider your next road trip or ghost hunting adventure, remember the legends of Route 666. Approach with caution and keep your eyes open for the spirits that may still wander its desolate stretches. The haunted highway awaits, ready to reveal its secrets to those who dare to travel its length. The Wabasha Street Caves in St. Paul, Minnesota have a long and storied history that stretches back to the 1840s. Carved into the sandstone bluffs along the Mississippi River, these caves were originally created to mine silica for glassmaking. Over the years, the caves have served many purposes, from growing mushrooms to storing goods, but it is their time as a speakeasy during the Prohibition era that has cemented their reputation as one of Minnesota's most haunted locations. During the 1920s and 1930s, the Wabasha Street Caves became a haven for gangsters. St. Paul, with its reputation as a safe city for criminals, was the perfect place for these outlaws to lay low and enjoy themselves. The first speakeasy to open in the caves was the Wabasha Street Speakeasy, a hidden club where gangsters like John Dillinger and Ma Barker were rumored to have frequented. Later, the speakeasy was transformed into a more upscale venue known as the Castle Royal. This nightclub attracted not only the criminal element, but also the upper-class citizens of St. Paul, who were looking for a good time during the dark days of Prohibition, as glamorous as the Castle Royal was. It also became the site of more sinister activities. The cave's secluded location made them an ideal spot for gangsters to conduct their business. The most infamous event in the cave's history occurred in the Fireside Room, a side chamber off the main cave. Local legend tells of a night when four gangsters were playing cards by the fireplace. A man with a case walked in, asked the band to leave early, and then proceeded to gun down three of the car players. The bodies were never found, but bullet holes in the fireplace stand as a chilling reminder of that night. After World War II, the caves were closed to the public and returned to their original use as a place for growing mushrooms. But by the 1970s, they were once again opened up as a nightclub, this time catering to the disco craze with the Castle Royal II. Although the music and the crowd had changed, the haunted atmosphere remained. Over the years, many visitors have reported encountering the spirits of those long-dead gangsters, still lingering in the caves where they met their end. Today, the Wabasha Street Caves are used as an event center and tourist attraction. The caves' eerie history and their connection to some of America's most notorious criminals have made them a popular spot for ghost tours. Visitors come from far and wide, hoping to catch a glimpse of the restless spirits that are said to haunt these underground chambers. Whether it's the ghostly figures seen on the old dance floor, the phantom couple who appear during events, or the terrifying apparition of a woman at the bar, the Wabasha Street Caves continue to be a place where the past refuses to stay buried. The Wabasha Street Caves' reputation as one of Minnesota's most haunted locations has grown over the decades fueled by numerous reports of paranormal activity and the cave's dark history. While the caves themselves are a fascinating piece of St. Paul's history, it's the ghostly legends that have truly captured the public's imagination. The cave's eerie atmosphere is undeniable. Carved deep into the sandstone, the tunnels and rooms are dimly lit with shadows that seem to stretch and flicker as you move through the space this haunting environment, 
combined with the cave's infamous past as a gangster hideout, has led many to believe that the spirits of those who met violent ends here still linger. One of the most persistent legends involves the ghosts of the gangsters who once frequented the caves. Visitors and staff alike have reported seeing shadowy figures dressed in 1930s style suits and fedoras, silently watching from dark corners or walking through the old dance floor. These apparitions are often accompanied by the faint sound of music, as if an unseen band is still playing for the long gone patrons of the Castle Royal. The fireside room, where the notorious triple murder allegedly took place, is said to be a hotspot for paranormal activity. Many people have felt an overwhelming sense of unease upon entering this room, as if they're being watched by unseen eyes. Some have even reported feeling a sudden chill or hearing the distant echo of gunfire, a chilling reminder of the violent events that took place here. The caves are also home to the spirit of a mysterious woman often seen near the old bar area. Described as a forlorn figure with a pale face and sad eyes, she is said to appear out of nowhere, startling those who encounter her. Some believe she might be the spirit of a waitress who witnessed the murders in the fireside room, forever tied to the place where she saw such horror. As word of these ghostly encounters spread, the Wabasha Street Caves became a magnet for paranormal investigators and ghost hunters. Many have visited the caves, hoping to document evidence of the supernatural. Some have captured strange orbs of light in their photographs, while others have recorded unexplained voices during their investigations. These experiences have only added to the cave's reputation as a haunted location, drawing in curious visitors year after year. The haunted history of the Wabasha Street Caves is not just a collection of ghost stories. It's a reflection of the turbulent past that shaped St. Paul during the Prohibition era. The caves stand as a reminder of a time when crime and corruption were rampant and where the line between life and death was often crossed in the blink of an eye. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, the chilling atmosphere of the Wabasha Street Caves and the tales of those who met their end here are enough to send a shiver down anyone's spine. Within the Wabasha Street Caves, certain areas are believed to be particularly active with paranormal phenomena, tied directly to the specific events and figures from the cave's dark history. These haunted spots have become the focal points of many ghost stories, with visitors and investigators recounting eerie encounters with the spirits that are said to linger there. One of the most infamous areas is the Fireside Room, the site of the rumored triple gangster murder. This room, with its old stone fireplace and vintage decor, carries an unsettling energy. Many people who enter the fireside room report feeling a sudden drop in temperature, as if the air around them is turned icy cold. Some have even claimed to see the ghostly figures of the murdered gangsters, seated at the table where they met their end. These apparitions are often described as being incredibly lifelike, dressed in period clothing, their faces expressionless as they stare into the fire or at one another, replaying the final moments of their lives. Another hotspot for ghostly activity is the main dance floor area of the Castle Royal. This space, once alive with the sounds of big band music and the laughter of revelers, now holds a different kind of energy. Several visitors have reported seeing the spectral forms of dancers twirling across the floor, their feet moving silently in a waltz that only they can hear. These ghostly couples, dressed in elegant attire from the 1930s, are often seen during the quieter moments of the day, when the caves are still and the only sounds are the echoes of the past. The phantom dancers seem unaware of the living, lost in their own world, repeating the joy of a night that never truly ended for them. The old bar area is another place where the paranormal seems to converge. It's here that the spirit of the mysterious woman is most often seen. Described as a ghostly figure with a sorrowful expression, she has been spotted by numerous people, always near the bar, as if waiting for someone who never arrived. Some believe 
she could be a former employee, possibly the waitress, who witnessed the gangster murders in the fireside room, her spirit trapped in the place where she experienced such terror. Her presence is often accompanied by a feeling of deep sadness, and some who have seen her claim to hear the faint sound of weeping. In addition to these specific hauntings, there are also reports of other, less defined phenomena throughout the caves. Visitors have spoken of hearing disembodied voices, the sounds of footsteps echoing through empty corridors, and seeing misty, translucent figures that vanish as quickly as they appear. Objects are said to move on their own, and lights flicker without explanation. One particularly eerie tale involves a group of tourists who took a photograph in the caves, only to discover later that they were not alone in the image. Behind them stood the faint outline of a man in a fedora, his face obscured by shadow. These ghostly encounters have solidified the Wabasha Street Caves' reputation as one of the most haunted places in Minnesota. Each story, whether it involves a shadowy figure, a chilling breeze, or a strange noise, adds another layer to the mystery of the caves. The spirits that are said to inhabit these underground tunnels seem to be deeply connected to the history of the place. Their restless energy, a reminder of the violence and intrigue that once filled these dark spaces. For those who dare to explore, the Wabasha Street Caves offer a glimpse into a past that refuses to stay buried. Beyond the specific hauntings already mentioned, the Wabasha Street Caves are filled with many other ghostly tales, each adding to the eerie atmosphere that pervades these underground passages. As visitors continue to explore the caves, they often encounter spirits and strange phenomena in less well-known areas, deepening the sense of unease that these historic tunnels evoke. One such area is the back tunnels of the caves, where the light barely penetrates, leaving long stretches of shadowy corridors. These tunnels, used in the past for storage and as escape routes, have become a focal point for ghost hunters and thrill seekers. Many people report hearing whispers in these darkened passages, voices that seem to come from just around the corner, but when they investigate, they find nothing. The whispers are often described as urgent, almost frantic, as if the spirits are trying to communicate something important, but are unable to make themselves fully understood. In these tunnels, the feeling of being watched is almost overwhelming. Visitors have spoken of the sensation of eyes following them as they walk, accompanied by the faintest sounds of footsteps echoing their own. Some have even claimed to feel a cold hand brush against their skin, only to turn around and find the tunnel empty. These experiences have led many to believe that the back tunnels are haunted by the spirits of those who met untimely deaths within the caves, perhaps even the victims of the infamous gangster violence that once took place there. Another haunted spot in the caves is the storage area that was once used to age cheese and beer. While this might seem like an unlikely location for ghostly activity, it has become known for strange occurrences. Workers who have been in the storage area late at night report hearing the clinking of bottles and the scraping of crates being moved, even though no one else is present. On more than one occasion, objects have been found in different places from where they were left, as if unseen hands have been at work during the night. There is also the old kitchen, where the spirits of former staff members are said to linger. This kitchen, which served the speakeasies, and nightclubs that operated in the caves is a place where people often feel a sudden chill, despite the warmth of the ovens that once filled the room. Knives and utensils are sometimes found scattered on the counters in the morning, even though they were neatly put away the night before. One of the more unsettling reports involves the smell of freshly cooked food wafting through the kitchen, even though the ovens have been cold for years. Some believe that the spirits of the cooks continue their work in the afterlife, preparing meals for guests who have long since passed away. One of the more curious hauntings occurs in the dressing rooms, once used by performers who entertained the crowds at Castle Royal. These small, 
dimly lit rooms have been the site of numerous sightings of ghostly figures, often seen in the mirrors as fleeting reflections. The spirits of former performers still dressed in their stage costumes are said to appear briefly in the reflection before disappearing as suddenly as they came. People who enter these rooms often describe feeling a sense of nostalgia mixed with melancholy, as if the walls themselves remember the laughter, music, and heartbreak that once filled the space. Finally, there is the entrance tunnel, which many believe is a portal of sorts for the spirits that inhabit the caves. This tunnel, with its rough-hewn walls and low ceiling, has an oppressive feel that only intensifies as one moves deeper into the caves. It is here that many first experience the strange energies of the Wabasha Street Caves, with some reporting a strong, almost magnetic pull that seems to draw them further into the darkness. Others have spoken of seeing shadowy figures at the edge of their vision, figures that vanish when they try to focus on them. This tunnel has become synonymous with the idea of the caves as a gateway to the unknown, a place where the past continues to bleed into the present. As the stories of these hauntings spread, the Wabasha Street Caves have solidified their reputation as a place where history and the supernatural intersect. Each area within the caves seems to hold its own secrets, waiting to be discovered by those brave enough to explore. For many, the caves are not just a historical site, but a living, breathing entity filled with the echoes of a past that refuses to rest. As the stories of the Wabasha Street Caves have been passed down through the years, the line between history and legend has become increasingly blurred. And what remains clear, however, is the undeniable presence that still lingers within these darkened tunnels. The caves, once a lively center of entertainment and illicit activity, now serve as a chilling reminder of the past, a past that refuses to fade away. For many visitors, the Wabasha Street Caves offer a unique glimpse into St. Paul's colorful history, where the echoes of a bygone era can still be heard. The ghosts of gangsters, speakeasy patrons, and those who met untimely deaths within these walls continue to leave their mark on the present. Whether it's the sound of distant music, the flicker of a shadow just out of sight, or the cold touch of an unseen hand, the supernatural experiences reported by those who have entered the caves are both compelling and unsettling. The enduring appeal of the Wabasha Street Caves lies in their ability to transport visitors to a different time, a time when the air was thick with the scent of whiskey and the threat of violence hung in the shadows. It is a place where the past is ever present, where the spirits of those who once walked these halls seem to be waiting, watching, and perhaps even guiding those who venture too close to their hidden world. Despite their haunted reputation, the caves continued to be a popular venue for events, tours, and paranormal investigations. Each year, countless people are drawn to the mystery and intrigue of the Wabasha Street Caves, eager to experience for themselves the eerie atmosphere that has made these tunnels a focal point for ghost stories in Minnesota. The stories of the Wabasha Street Caves remind us that history is never truly gone it lives on in the places we visit, the stories we tell, and the experiences we share. The caves are a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, even in death. The ghosts of the Wabasha Street Caves are not just relics of the past. They are a part of the living history of St. Paul, forever entwined with the city's identity. As you leave the caves and return to the sunlight, it's hard not to feel a sense of awe at the power these underground passages hold. The Wabasha Street Caves are more than just a tourist attraction. They are a reminder that some stories never truly end. They continue to unfold, whispered by the spirits who still call these caves home, inviting each new visitor to add their own chapter to the ever-growing legend of one of Minnesota's most haunted places. Pauly's Island a small coastal town in South Carolina is known for its beautiful, quiet beaches and laid-back atmosphere. 
just south of Myrtle Beach, this tiny island stretches only about three miles long and a quarter mile wide, making it a peaceful escape for those looking to relax by the sea. But beyond its sun-soaked shores and charming old houses, Polly's Island hides a much darker, more mysterious side, a side that has made it one of the most haunted places in the state. The island's haunted history stretches back to its early days. The first known inhabitants were the Waccamaw and Winya Native American tribes, who lived in the area for thousands of years before the arrival of European settlers. The Europeans, led by Spanish explorers in the early 1500s, brought disease and conflict, devastating the native populations. As time passed, the area became a popular spot for wealthy planters, who built summer homes to escape the heat of inland South Carolina. These homes, with their long histories, have since become the setting for many ghost stories. Polly's Island's reputation as a haunted place began to take shape in the 19th century. One of the earliest tales involves George Polly, after whom the island is named. His family and other wealthy settlers brought with them stories of ghosts and spirits, and it didn't take long for these tales to become deeply rooted in the island's folklore. Over the years, Visitors and locals alike have reported numerous sightings of ghosts and other strange phenomena, adding to the island's eerie allure. Among the many ghost stories that haunt Polly's Island, the most famous is that of the Gray Man. This spectral figure is said to appear on the beach before devastating storms, warning those who see him to leave the island. According to legend, those who heed his warning are spared from the worst of the storm's destruction while those who ignore him face dire consequences. The Gray Man is just one of many spirits said to wander the island, making it a place where the past and the present seem to blend together in unsettling ways. Polly's Island's haunted history is not just confined to the beaches. The island is also home to several haunted buildings, including the Pelican Inn, where guests have reported seeing the ghost of a former owner who was a Confederate soldier. Another well-known haunt is All Saints Church, where the ghost of a young woman named Alice Flagg is said to wander, searching for the engagement ring she lost before her untimely death. With its rich history and eerie legends, Polly's Island has earned its place as one of South Carolina's most haunted locations. In the next part of this story, we will dive deeper into the island's reputation as a haunted place and explore the events that have made it so. Polly's Island has earned its reputation as one of the most haunted places in South Carolina. This tiny resort town, with its quiet beaches and laid-back atmosphere, hides a darker side filled with ghostly tales that have been passed down for generations. The island's haunted reputation is not just based on stories, but also on countless encounters and sightings reported by locals and visitors alike. One of the most famous spirits associated with Polly's Island is the Grey Man, a ghost that has become almost synonymous with the island itself. The Grey Man is believed to be a protective spirit, appearing on the beach just before a hurricane or major storm hits. For over 200 years, people have reported seeing this figure dressed in grey, warning them of impending danger. The stories suggest that anyone who sees the Grey Man and heeds his warning will be spared from the worst of the storm's wrath, with their property often left untouched while others suffer severe damage. But the Gray Man is not the only ghostly presence on the island. The story of Alice Flagg, a young woman who died of a broken heart, adds another layer to Polly's Island's haunted history. Alice's spirit is said to roam the island searching for the engagement ring that was taken from her before she died. Many who visit her grave at All Saints Episcopal Church Cemetery have felt a strange pull on their own rings, as if Alice's spirit is still searching for her lost love. The Pelican Inn, one of the islands whose few historic inns, also has its share of ghost stories. The former owner, a Confederate soldier, is said to haunt the inn along with the spirits of two Boston Terriers. Guests and staff have reported hearing the dogs barking 
and even seeing their ghostly forms running through the halls. The inn's connection to the gray man only adds to the mystery, as he has also been spotted near the inn, further cementing the island's eerie reputation. Polly's island's haunted history is deeply rooted in its past, with each ghost story connected to the island's long history as a beach resort and its ties to the sea. The spirits that haunt this island seem to be as much a part of its identity as the sandy beaches and historic buildings, creating a unique blend of beauty and mystery that continues to draw both the curious and the brave. The island's ghostly tales have been enough to make even the most skeptical visitors think twice. Whether it's the Grey Man, Alice Flagg, or the spirits at the Pelican Inn, these stories contribute to the island's reputation as a place where the past never truly leaves, and where the spirits of those long gone still make their presence known. As the stories continue to be told, and new encounters are reported, Polly's Island's haunted reputation only grows stronger, drawing more people to this mysterious and enchanting place. Polly's Island is home to several haunted locations, each with its own eerie stories and ghostly encounters. These places are not just popular with tourists, but also with those who are fascinated by the paranormal. The island's serene beauty contrasts sharply with the chilling experiences reported by those who have ventured into its most haunted spots. One of the most well-known haunted locations on Polly's Island is the Pelican Inn. This historic inn has been the site of numerous ghostly sightings, particularly of the Confederate soldier who once owned the property. Guests have reported seeing his ghostly figure walking through the inn, especially late at night. The soldier's presence is often accompanied by a cold draft or the distinct sound of footsteps echoing through the halls. Some guests have even claimed to have seen the ghostly forms of two Boston Terriers that belonged to the soldier barking and playing in the inn's corridors. These spectral dogs are said to appear suddenly and vanish just as quickly, leaving behind an eerie silence. Another infamous location is All Saints Episcopal Church Cemetery, where Alice Flagg's grave is located. Alice's story is one of tragic love, and her spirit is said to linger near her resting place, still searching for the engagement ring. She was forced to give up before her untimely death. Visitors to the cemetery have reported feeling a strange, almost magnetic pull toward her grave, particularly if they are wearing rings. Some have even felt their rings twist or move on their fingers, as if Alice herself is trying to take them. The air around her grave is often described as unusually cold, and some visitors have seen the faint outline of a young woman in a white dress, believed to be Alice, wandering among the tombstones. The Grey Man is another ghost whose presence has been felt in various locations across the island, particularly along the beach. His ghostly figure, always clad in grey, has been seen walking the shoreline just before major storms. The Grey Man is not just a harbinger of bad weather, but also a protector, warning those who see him to leave the island before disaster strikes. Many believe that the Grey Man's appearance is a sign that they should evacuate and those who heed his warning often find their homes miraculously spared from the worst of the storm. His sightings have been reported as recently as the 1989 Hurricane Hugo, where several residents claimed to have seen him before the storm hit, saving their homes from the devastation that followed. Even the beaches of Pauly's Island are not free from ghostly encounters. The soft sound of footsteps in the sand when no one is around or the sudden, unexplained appearance of footprints leading to the water and disappearing are common experiences. Some say these are the marks left by the spirits of those who once walked these shores, while others believe it could be the work of the Grey Man, continuing his eternal vigil over the island. These haunted locations and the ghostly encounters that occur within them contribute to Polly's Island's mystique. The island's ghosts are woven into the fabric of its history, making it a place where the past is never far away and where the line between the living and the dead is often blurred. Visitors come for the beauty of the island, but many leave with stories of their own, tales of ghostly figures 
and strange occurrences that only add to the legend of Polly's Island. Polly's Island is steeped in ghostly legends and superstitions that have been passed down through generations, adding to its reputation as one of the most haunted places in South Carolina. These tales are woven into the fabric of the island's culture, with locals and visitors alike sharing stories that blur the line between myth and reality. One of the most enduring legends on Polly's Island is the tale of the weeping woman. According to local lore, this ghostly figure is seen near the marshlands at twilight, her mournful cries echoing through the still evening air. The weeping woman is said to be the spirit of a mother who lost her child in a tragic accident many years ago. Some say she was a slave woman who lost her baby to the dangerous waters of the marshes, while others believe she was a local resident whose child drowned in a boating accident. Regardless of the story's origins, those who encounter her often feel an overwhelming sense of sorrow, as if the weight of her grief is pressing down upon them. The Weeping Woman's legend serves as a haunting reminder of the tragedies that have befallen the island's inhabitants over the centuries. Another superstition tied to Polly's Island is the belief in cursed land. It is said that certain areas of the island are cursed, leading to misfortune for those who dare to build or live on them. These cursed lands are often associated with ancient burial grounds or sites of past violence, where the spirits of the dead are believed to still linger. Some locals claim that homes built on these lands are plagued by strange occurrences such as objects moving on their own, doors slamming shut, or sudden unexplained cold spots. Even more chilling are the reports of residents experiencing nightmares and waking up with scratches or bruises on their bodies, believed to be inflicted by restless spirits. The island's connection to the supernatural also extends to its waters. Fishermen on Polly's Island have long spoken of ghostly ships that appear out of the mist only to vanish as suddenly as they came. These spectral vessels are often seen on foggy nights, sailing silently along the coast. Some say these ships are the spirits of lost mariners, doomed to sail the seas for eternity after perishing in violent storms. Others believe they are harbingers of bad luck, and that seeing one of these ghostly ships is a sign that misfortune is on the horizon. The appearance of a ghost ship is often met with a mixture of fear and reverence, as locals know to respect the power of the sea and the spirits that may dwell within it. One particularly eerie legend tells of the haunted rice plantations that once dotted the island. These plantations, which thrived during the antebellum period, were the site of immense suffering for the enslaved people who worked them. It is said that the spirits of these enslaved individuals still haunt the land, particularly near the old rice fields and the remnants of the plantation homes. Visitors to these areas have reported hearing disembodied voices, feeling an oppressive presence, and even seeing ghostly figures toiling in the fields. These spirits are believed to be trapped in a cycle of endless labor, unable to find peace even in death. Locals on Polly's Island also hold a deep respect for the island's natural elements believing that the land, sea, and sky are all connected to the spirits that inhabit the area. Many adhere to old superstitions, such as leaving offerings of food or small trinkets at certain locations to appease the spirits and ensure good fortune. These rituals are seen as a way to maintain harmony between the living and the dead, acknowledging the presence of the island's ghosts while also seeking their protection. The ghostly legends and superstitions of Polly's Island are more than just stories. They are a vital part of the island's identity. These tales serve as a reminder of the island's long and often tumultuous history, where the past continues to influence the present. For those who visit Polly's Island, the experience is not just about enjoying the beautiful beaches and serene landscapes but also about connecting with the island's haunted past and the spirits that still call it home. Polly's Island's haunted legacy leaves an indelible mark on all who visit, embedding itself in the memories and imaginations 
of those who experience its eerie charm. The island's supernatural history, woven into the fabric of its culture and daily life, has made it a destination not just for beachgoers, but for ghost hunters, paranormal enthusiasts, and anyone drawn to the mysteries of the unknown. The stories of the gray man, the weeping woman, and the other ghostly figures that haunt Polly's Island are more than just legends. They are a testament to the island's deep connection to its past. These tales remind us that history is not just a collection of dates and events, but a living, breathing force that continues to shape the present. The spirits that are said to roam the island are believed to be echoes of that past, unable or unwilling to move on, still lingering in the places where they once lived, loved and suffered. For many locals, these ghost stories are a source of pride, a unique aspect of the island's identity that sets it apart from other coastal communities. They view the ghosts not as something to be feared, but as guardians of the island, protectors who watch over the living and ensure that the island's history is never forgotten. The Gray Man, in particular, is seen as a benevolent spirit. His warning is a gift to those who respect the island's power and heed the lessons of the past. Tourism on Pauly's Island is heavily influenced by its haunted reputation. Ghost tours, where visitors can explore the island's most haunted sites, have become a popular attraction, offering a glimpse into the eerie side of this serene destination. These tours often include visits to historic homes, old cemeteries, and the marshlands where the island's most famous spirits are said to reside. For those brave enough to explore after dark, the experience can be both thrilling and unsettling, as the line between the living and the dead seems to blur in the moonlit shadows. But beyond the tourism and the ghost stories, there is a deeper significance to Polly's Island's haunted legacy. The spirits that are said to inhabit the island serve as a reminder of the lives that were lived here, the joys and sorrows, the triumphs and tragedies that have all left their mark on this place. They are a link to a past that is still very much alive, a past that continues to influence the island's present and future. The haunted legacy of Polly's Island is also a reflection of the broader human experience. It speaks to our fears of the unknown, our fascination with the afterlife, and our desire to understand what happens after death. The stories of ghosts and spirits are universal, found in every culture and society, and they serve as a way for us to confront and explore these fears in a way that is both safe and intriguing. On Pauly's Island, these stories are particularly potent, a powerful reminder that the past is never truly gone and that the spirits of those who came before us may still be with us in ways we cannot fully understand. As the final part of our journey through Pauly's Island's haunted history, it is clear that this is a place where the past and present coexist in a delicate balance. The spirits of the island are more than just ghostly apparitions. They are a part of the island's soul, a living connection to its rich and often turbulent history. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, there is no denying the power of these stories to captivate, to chill, and to inspire. In the end, Polly's Island is a place where the mysteries of the past are never far from the surface, where the line between the natural and supernatural is thin, and where the haunted legacy of the island continues to draw visitors from all over the world. For those who come to this beautiful yet eerie place, the experience is one they are unlikely to forget, as the stories of Polly's Island's ghosts linger in their minds long after they have left its shores.